In this training video, you'll learn how to efficiently transform polygons from your DXF file into fully modeled elements. I've started my builder model by importing a DXF file that contains detailed polygons outlining our future modeled elements. By the end of this video, this level will be fully modeled, including slabs, columns, walls, beams, openings, and drop caps. So I'm going to start by transforming my slabs, and I have two slabs in this model. I have a balcony slab defined by this polygon, and I have a main slab defined by this polygon. So I'm just going to pick my main slab to start. I've selected the polygon. Now I'm going to go to my model tab, and all the way on the right I have a transform section, and the very top one is our transform slab option. So with that polygon selected, I'll click on transform slab, and now you can see I have a slab that has been transformed from that polygon. I'll next do the other slab here. So I'm going to select that polygon and go back up and click the same icon to transform that slab. So now all of my slabs have been transformed and they are now modeled elements. The next thing that I'm going to transform is going to be my drop caps. So I have two drop caps in this model. Uh, one at this column here, and one at this column. And I'm going to do them in a very similar way. Um, but I'm going to select both of them at once this time for a little bit more efficiency. So I'll select one of my drop cap polygons, and then I'll hold control on my keyboard and select the other one. So I have two polygons selected at once. You can see in the properties grid up here that I have two polygons selected. And now I can go to my transform section of my model tab again. And in the middle, there's a transform drop cap panel option. So I'll select that. And now I have my drop caps transformed as well. And you can see that if I go into my isometric view here, that I now have 3D modeled elements for my drop caps and my slabs. All right, the next thing that I want to transform is the columns. And we could go about transforming them in the exact same way by clicking on all of them and using that, our transform column button. But there's a lot more columns than there are slabs or drop caps. So there's an even faster way to go about this. So what I'm going to do is select one of my polygons that's going to define my column. And typically when you import a DXF file, your different elements are going to be on different layers of that DXF file. So you can look in your properties grid with one of these polygons selected. And in the appearance section here, under layer, you can see that these columns are set to the tutorial column layer. So now all I need to do is select all of my polygons that are assigned to that layer. I can do that by going down into my quick access toolbar here and using my select by type option, except instead of just selecting select by type, I'm going to select the down caret next to it, which gives me a few different selection options. And here I can select by layer. So I'll select by layer, I'll select that tutorial column, and then click OK. And now you can see I have all of my column polygons selected, and I can go back into my transform section and go to transform column. If I select that, now I can go to my isometric and you can see that we now have all of our columns added at the same time. So another trick that we can do is actually to turn off layers. So I'll use that to transform my walls and openings. So down here again in our quick access toolbar, I'm going to select layer settings. And in here, I'm going to turn all layers off. So this will make my screen completely blank. And then I'm just going to turn on my tutorial wall and tutorial opening layers, as those are the layers that my polygons are on for my walls and openings. So I'll turn those on by selecting the light bulb next to tutorial wall and tutorial opening. And then I'll click OK. And now you can see we have our walls and our openings are the only things that are visible. So this just makes it a little bit easier to select these elements. So now that we have our walls here, we actually have two different types of wall polygons. 
So we have a single wall, and then we have a compound wall. So if I click on this compound wall polygon, you'll notice it's all one polygon. However, we're gonna end up with three different walls that are gonna define this. So that's what's called a compound polygon or a compound wall. I'll start with my single wall as that's a little bit more simple. I'm gonna select that polygon, go up to my transform here and select transform single wall. And now you can see the colors changed and I have a wall at that location. Next, I'll go to my compound wall, select that polygon and right below transform single wall, there's this option to transform compound walls. So this is gonna create multiple walls out of that single polygon. I'm gonna select that and I'll zoom in here so you can see what's been created. And now I have three walls that I want and two walls that I don't. So sometimes this happens and no worries, I'm just gonna select that extra wall and then delete it using the delete option on my keyboard. And now all of my walls are transformed, which I can see again in my isometric view. Lastly, I'm gonna transform my openings. So this is a fairly common occurrence where you have openings on either side of a core wall that's an eye shape such as this. And typically I recommend actually creating a single opening that runs the full length here instead of two separate openings. And this is just better for creating a mesh. So I'm actually gonna delete an opening on one side, select this opening and just extend it, oops, extend it to this corner here and this corner here. And then with that polygon selected, I can transform the opening. So I'll select that and now I have an opening at that location. It's a little bit hard to see in this view, but we'll take a look at that in a minute. So now I want to turn on the visibility of all of my elements. So I can do that using my layer settings again, and I'm gonna turn all layers on and okay. And then I'll go back to my top view. So the last thing that I need to transform is gonna be my beams. And I have five beams down here along the bottom. So what I'm gonna do is same way that I transformed the drop caps, I'm gonna select all of my beams at once so I'll select this beam, hold control, select the next beam, number three, number four, and number five. So you'll notice all of my beams are drawn from column to column. This is how I recommend that you model all of your beams. So now that I have all of my polygons selected, I can go up to my transform and select transform beam. Now, if I go to my isometric view, you can see all of my modeled elements and just so we can take a look at our opening, I'm gonna to go to this teapot icon for view model, and this will open up my solid model viewer. And now I can actually view all of those modeled elements in a 3D view. Thank you for watching this training video. If you have any additional questions, please visit our website at risa.com or reach out to us in support at adaptsupport at risa.com. Thank you.